When Queen Victoria passed away, his father was catapulted into power. The long-awaited role of king was his, and when he became King Edward the Seventh, this made George the new Prince of Wales, and he would learn as much as he could over the years on how to become king from his father. The rest of his time was spent making and raising a family, as well as travelling the world. It is a good job that he was able to be educated on his future role as king, as his father was not on the throne for long. And his father's controversial habits had finally caught up on him. The years of eating, drinking, and sleeping were no more. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Queen Victoria reigned over Britain for 63 years, but his father would only be king for a fraction of the time, with nine years. He succumbed to illness on the 6th of May 1910, and George was devastated. He wrote, I have lost my best friend, and the best of fathers. I am heartbroken and overwhelmed with grief. The death of his father did not take front and centre of his mind for long, as he had other things to worry about with the ongoings of World War I. On the 4th of August 1914, four years after George became king, he wrote a frank entry in his diary. I held a council at 10.45 to declare war with Germany. It is a terrible catastrophe, but it is not our fault. Please to God, it may be soon over. World War I was the most horrifying conflict the world had ever seen, and the politics of it were very close to home, with his own family members serving as enemies. Kaiser Wilhelm II was the figurehead of Germany at the time, and George and Britain blamed him wholeheartedly for the destruction on the world. Wilhelm was in fact George's first cousin, this was a war of families, as well as continents. Strangely enough, George's ancestry was German. He came from the house of saxe coburg in Gotha. It was difficult, therefore, for him to portray himself with proud national British status. Britons watched as thousands upon thousands of their fathers, sons and brothers went off to fight Germans, while a German ruled them. It did not go unnoticed by the public, and George knew that he had to do something drastic to change the narrative. He changed his family name from the House of saxe coburg in Gotha to the House of Windsor by official royal proclamation. He convinced his other German relatives to take up the name too, with Prince Louis of Battenberg changing his name to Louis Mountbatten. The name lives on today with the current monarchy serving under the House of Windsor, but George could not reform all ills with this statement. During a stressful period for George, his other first cousin was coming into trouble in Russia when Tsar Nicholas II was overthrown by a dangerous and murderous family, the Bolsheviks, who had taken over the country. The government were quick to offer their support and help in the form of asylum for the family, but oddly, George heartlessly turned them away with devastating and fatal consequences. This was the ultimate betrayal to his own family. Rather than fuel a revolution in his own country, which is what George believed the Romanov family would do, he tragically turned them away. His cousin and his family were left alone to be murdered in cold blood after several gruelling months in captivity. Their bodies were dumped down an abandoned mineshaft. In 1918, the war ended and King George, alongside his people, rejoiced with happiness for the first time in a long time. However, there would be tragedy on the horizon for George. Prince John, George's youngest child, was born in 1905, but from the moment of his birth, he was a sickly and frail boy. Little Johnny was the baby of the family, but no matter how much anyone spoiled him, his health just never improved. Finally, just two months after Amos Day, George's worst fear came true when he suffered a seizure on the 18th of January 1919 that he would never recover from. Tragically, at only the young age of 13, 
he passed away in his sleep. George and his wife, Mary, were both devastated, but part of them was relieved. John's entire life had been filled with sickness and pain, and in a letter George painfully described John's passing as the greatest mercy possible. It was George that started the Christmas tradition that we so eagerly await today from the current monarchy. In 1932, he sat down to address the nation for the first ever radio announcement from the monarchy on Christmas Day. This was not something he was overly enthralled to do, but his advisers reminded him that his people wanted to hear from him. And off the back of his announcement, the people felt connected to him, and he won the hearts of the nation, making him a beloved king, even if he didn't see it. In 1935, George celebrated his Silver Jubilee. Thousands of people joined the streets to celebrate the occasions with him. His radio address had allowed him to reach his people, unlike any monarch who became before him. When he heard the crown's adulation, he exclaimed, I cannot understand it. After all, I am only a very ordinary sort of fellow. George was part of a large brood of siblings and his older brother was the problem child and this pattern repeated itself in his own children. George's relationship with his eldest son Edward grew more and more strained as the years went on, despite being close when he was younger. Now, oftentimes fathers expect too much of their sons, but in this case, George was 100% right. Prince Edward was not the kind of guy to make a father proud. Join me in part four to delve into how his son took his adulterous and promiscuous behaviour of his father, as well as being involved in the scandals of all royal scandals. I will also look at how King George, his own doctor, euthanised him. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.